And uh, open your Bibles, if you would please, to the book of 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel and chapter number 20. Uh, probably one of the more unusual texts that I have ever used on a Mother's Day. Uh, but uh, uh, as I read through, I was reading through uh, some scripture a uh, so couple of weeks or so ago and ran across this text and, and paused there for a minute and thought about it some and prayed about it some. And, you know, uh, it, it dawned on me that... Uh, a lot of times in the life of moms, uh, things aren't always easy, okay? Uh, I got to thinking back about my own mother uh, when I was growing up, and uh, she really had a challenging life. I mean, she had there was my, myself and my three half-brothers and uh, a husband who was not always the kind of man that he ought to have been for many, many, many reasons. And uh, it was just uh, such a difficult, difficult time. She had to work hard. And uh, I think about the sacrifice that she made for us. And uh, frankly, she, she was a hero. Uh, whether anybody ever gave her credit for it or not, uh, she was a hero. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And I realize that sometimes being a mom, just being a woman, is a challenging thing. Now, it's tr true for all of us, but there's something just very special here that I saw in this particular text. And uh, I want to share with you today the marks of a wise mother. The marks of a wise mother. Second Samuel chapter 20, beginning in verse number 15, uh, an unusual text. I, I'll tell you that right off the get-go. But uh, uh, let's look at this and try to glean some things that I believe will be a help to us today. Second Samuel chapter 20, verse 15. If you can, uh, stand together as we read our text. Read the Word of God and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. The Bible says this. And they came and besieged him, that was a guy named Sheba, in Abel of Beth Maaca, and they cast up a bank against the city, and it stood in the trench, and all the people that were with Joab battered the wall to throw it down. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, say I pray you unto Joab, come near hither that I may speak with thee. And when he was come near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, They, they, were, they were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel at Abel. And so they ended the matter. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it from me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, hath lifted up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people in her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and cast it out to Joab, and he blew a trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent, and Joab returned to, uh, to Jerusalem unto the king. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for your wonderful word. Lord, we find a, a really quite a graphic text here today. And yet, Lord, we see that, Lord, whenever love for your family and love for your people and love for your friends prevails, Lord, you're willing and, and, uh, and are able to make difficult decisions sometimes. And I just pray, dear God, that you would just teach us from your word today. I pray that every woman, every man, every, every boy, every girl, every young person, Lord, would be able to receive truth today from your word that will inspire them, Lord, to take a stand for what is right. 
And Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here today that does not know you as Savior, may today be their day of decision to trust you as Lord and Savior. And we'll thank you for it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you very much. You may be seated. You know, um, here we find in Scripture an account that, uh, that that's unusual and very frankly often overlooked. Now, I'm glad that most of you ladies, I, I hope all of you ladies, <laughs> have never had an opportunity where to protect your family, you'd have to encourage somebody else to chop off somebody's head over the wall, you know, to, uh, to get somebody to retire away from you. But you know what? I got a feeling that some of y'all, if you knew your family was uh, in, in danger, you would take whatever steps necessary, you know, to take care of your family. You know, sort of reminds me of the old uh, Quaker one time. Quakers were notorious for being pacifists, and somebody was coming and acting like they were going to do harm to his family, and he went walking out in the yard carrying a shotgun. And, and and began to speak an old English style of, uh, of language, as the Quakers many years ago were prone to do. And he said, I would not harm thee. I desire to do thee no harm, but the place where thou standest is where I'm about to shoot. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just do what's necessary to protect your family. Amen? And, uh, and so we find here a, a very, very unusual story. Now, what was going on, just to put it all in context, so you say, well, this is really strange that all of a sudden this happened. Well, they had just gotten through the, the rebellion, uh, uh, the civil war that had broken out over Absalom. Absalom had gathered up Israel. David and his forces had fled the city of Jerusalem. There was a tremendous battle and, and many, many people people died, including Absalom, and, and that had just happened, and in all of the chaos that uh, was left over after all of that warfare, this guy Sheba said, hey, this is my opportunity, I'm going to start a rebellion, I'm going to become king, and so he gathered up some forces to try to, try to uh, take over the nation, well, in the process, it didn't work out too good for him. And he very quickly ended up on the run and, uh, and basically went to this city uh, called Abel of Beth Maacah and got inside the city of, uh, of, uh, of Abel and was seeking refuge and sanctuary there to protect him from the forces of King David. Well, King David's forces come along under the leadership of Joab. Uh, they, they cast up a wall around the city. They're going to siege it. They're there battering on the walls trying to knock it down. I mean, they were just going to go in there and wipe out everything because as far as they were concerned, uh, Sheba, who was a rebel against the king, was finding sanctuary. And if they were going to protect him, then that city was going to suffer the cost. And this wise woman, we don't, we don't know her name. Okay? Doesn't tell us who she was. She intervenes and ends up saving the city. And so, uh, you know, she showed that, that uh, wisdom, uh, uh, you know, is, is many times more powerful than weapons of war. Wisdom is more powerful than weapons of war. Now, let's just go back and look at this this morning. And I want to share with you some things, and I just got challenged about a few things. I said, you know, this is not only good for women, this is good for dads as well. This is good for men as well. This is good for all of you that are younger, that are just maybe beginning to grow up your families. Uh, maybe you haven't even started a family yet. Maybe you're not even married yet. Uh, but the reality is these are principles that are really good for each each and every one of us. Now, first of all, get this in your mind. A wise mother will motivate to action. You go back and look at verses 15 and 16. Here comes Joab. I mean, he's attacking. Uh, now, Sheba had slipped into the city. I don't know if there was anybody that was in there that knew he was there that was protecting him or whatever the case may be. We're not really told all of those details. But here comes Joab. I mean, he, and he, and he uh, gets there and they're about to break down the walls. The trouble is closing in from the outside. 
You know, uh, if you go back earlier in the chapter, verses 1 and 2, we get a little bit of the rest of the story. It says, And there happened to be there a man of Belial whose name was Sheba, the son of Bichri, a Benjamite. And by the way, that word Belial uh, has the idea of he was just a worthless, wicked scoundrel. I mean, he was not a good guy. Okay, And he blew a trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse. Every man to his tents, O Israel. So every man of Israel went up from after David and followed Sheba the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave unto their king from Jordan even to Jerusalem. Drop down to verse 13. It says, When he was removed out of the highway, uh, that was someone that was killed there. And he says, And all the people went on after Joab to pursue after Sheba the son of Bichri. And he went through all all the tribes of Israel unto Abel and to Beth Meacha and all the Benites, uh, Berites, uh, and they were gathered together and went also after him. So he's on the run. He's there. He moves into the city. And, and, and you know, this mother realizes the circumstance. The trouble is coming from outside. You know, listen. Our homes are under attack. Have y'all figured that out? You look and see what's going on in the world today. You love, re, read the news and, and see what the news has to say about some of the things that are going on. How, how many of you saw this? We, uh, I briefly mentioned this this morning in Sunday school or somebody else did. Uh, there is someone that has touted themselves as an expert. That, uh, uh, And by the way, if you see her picture, you wonder what she's an expert at. Pinkish, bluish hair. Really sort of weird looking. And says, we are living in a world today where those of you that have babies, before you change your baby's diaper, you need to ask your baby's permission before you do it. Because otherwise you might be uh, assaulting that child. Now I'm sorry, can you imagine a baby say, can I change your diaper? No, I like being dirty. Give me a break. Now, some parent, parents need to be parents, amen? I mean, somebody's got to be in charge of the asylum or you're going to have all kinds of problems going on, okay? Trouble came from without. Adam and Eve were tempted to disobey God when the serpent beguiled Eve. You know, I don't even remember now who it was, but I read something, I believe it was last night, and I said, wow, I never thought of it that way. You know, a lot of times we say, well, the, the serpent came and tempted Eve uh, because Eve, and, and I've heard preachers say this before, I've maybe even said it myself. We'll say, uh, I've heard it said, well, Eve was the weaker vessel. And therefore, that's why the serpent under the control of the devil came and tempted Eve. You know, I think the, de the devil was smarter than that. I think the devil knew that if he could trick the woman to take of the fruit, the man, because he loved the woman, would go along with whatever she wanted to do. Listen, you ladies are a whole lot more powerful than what you give yourself credit for sometimes. Amen? I mean, a man will do wrong knowing full well that he's doing wrong, but he'll do it if it, if it means, uh, you know, uh, making the person that he loves happy. That's exactly what Adam did. Okay? I mean, the, the, the pressure, the attack on their happy home there in the Garden of Eden came from outside. We've got to ever be vigilant because there are snares and temptations that are all around us. In the book of Proverbs, in chapter number 6 and verse number 20, notice what it says. It says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of the strange woman. By the way, that strange woman there uh, is, is the evil woman. It's not just talking about just an evil woman. It's the idea of the, the, the allures and the temptations and, and of sin that are out 
out there that will draw us away from walking with God. Listen, you know, the, 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 there are pressures on the home today. You know, nobody in their right mind, only a fool, would bring trouble to their own house. Unfortunately, we do have an example of one that did that. In 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2, says this, 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Wherefore he did evil in the sight of the Lord like the house of Ahab, for they were his counselors after the death of his father to his destruction. I believe probably we could say that, that, that Athaliah was the worst mother ever recorded in the Bible. She was the counselor to do wickedly in her family. God help. You know, that is not the norm. You know, generally, it's the mom that is encouraging the kids to do right. Now, I'm not saying that the dads don't do that also. But dads try to do it more by example sometimes, whereas the mother does it with words and emotions and encouragement. You know, the fact of the matter is, when a need arises, it's time for action. This woman, this unnamed woman in Abel, I mean, when, when all of a sudden the soldiers are all around the outside of the city, they're, they're building up a bank against the walls of the city, they're taking a battering ram, they're hitting it against the walls, about to break it down. She goes out and says, hey, it's time to do something. And, and I think she, at the same time, she was also talking to the rest of the people in the city. You know, what are some things that we ought to do when a need arises? I think I think one of the greatest stories is in the book of 2 Kings in chapter 4. And I preached on this before, but I, I love the story. There's this woman, and she didn't have a child. And, and the prophet, Elisha, had, uh, had told her that she was going to have a child. And she did. And it was such a wonderful thing. And as the child began to grow up, he's out in the field with his father one day. And all of a sudden, he begins to complain. And he says, oh, my head, my head. And the father says, take him to his mom. Take him to his mom. Just, just. Well, he, he goes in. He sits on her lap. And dies. She takes him and lays him down on the prophet's bed that they had prepared for him when he traveled through. She gets herself and tells her men, all right, go on ahead of me and, and go up there. We're going to see the prophet. And, and she goes and tells her husband, I'm going to see the prophet. He says, why? It's not the time of year we're supposed to go see the prophet. She says, it shall be well. Huh. Now, buddy, that's faith. And if you read the rest of the story, Elisha came, Elisha prayed, and the child came back to life. Amen? But her faith was, it shall be well. She realized, man, it's time for action. It's, whenever it's time for action, it's time to trust God. It's time to believe God, and it's time to seek God. Listen. You and I know this by experience, and it's only getting worse and worse, but our families are under attack. You say, well, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. Trust God. Believe God. I mean, that's what we've got to do. We've got to stay faithful. You say, but it's hard. I understand. It is hard. You know what? If, if couples, when they first got married, could see ahead for the next 40 years and realize all of the challenges of, of raising their kids, they may not ever have kids. Okay? But the truth of the matter is the joy, the joy far surpasses the challenges. Through it all. Through it all. But I mean, there are times we got to realize that, that, man, there are times that we're going to face some stuff and we got to trust God, believe God, and seek God. And that's what she did. She went, this woman, and fell down at the feet of Elisha. And he says, what, what's going on? She says, listen, I didn't ask this child. You, you, God told me through you that I was going to have this child. And he says, okay, let me come. And he took care of the need. So a wise mother will motivate to action. A wise mother will also mediate for deliverance. 
I mean, she'll, she'll plead for wisdom. She, we find here in verse 17, it says, When he was come near uh, uh, unto her, the woman said, Art thou Joab? And he answered, I am he. Then she said unto him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake, saying, There were wont to speak in old times, saying, They shall surely ask counsel in Abel. And so they ended the matter. Abel was a city that was known for being wise. She says, I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel. Thou seekest to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why would Wilt thou swallow up the inheritance of the Lord? You know, she says, listen, we need to use some wisdom here. You're about to do an action that's going to be very, very devastating. She was wanting him to see that. You know, Proverbs chapter number 8, beginning with verse number 11. It says, for wisdom is better than rubies. And all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy. And the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign and princes decree justice. Boy, I'm so glad that that's in the Bible. Wisdom is more important than temporary riches. You know, as a kid, you know, I, I sort of lived a, 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 a two-fold life. With my mother, we were poor. Now, the only reason we were poor is because my stepfather wasted and blew most of his money. So my mother had to support the family. A lot of times he'd get off work on Friday and we wouldn't see him until Sunday. And by the time he come home, every dime he had made was gone. So it was rough. Then every other weekend I'd go to my dad's house. And that was all of a sudden a totally different world. <laughs> they actually had stuff. We actually ate good food. <laughs> At my mother's house, it's whatever's cheap. At my dad's house, wow, this is pretty neat. Wow, okay? Different kind of a world. But you know something? I saw so many times when my mom, struggling with what she had to struggle with, would still show wisdom and grace in difficult circumstances. It doesn't matter how much money you've got. Wisdom is much more powerful. And then we find this mother pleading for the innocent. You know, mothers have the capacity to love their children even at the times of their helplessness. It doesn't matter how old they are or how young they are. Whenever they have a need and they're helpless, we love them and we reach out to them. And, and listen, anytime we, we fall into the trap of growing cold to the innocent, we reveal that we have lost what the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, beginning with verse number 29. You, I, I just read that sometime. All of the host that really shows where America and the world is today. We have lost our natural affection. When I stop and think about People wanting to make a hero out of Planned Parenthood. And to think about the millions of babies that never saw life. Because they say, well, you know, it's a woman's right to choose. You say, well, preacher, I believe that. Well, let me tell you when to make the choice. Time to make the choice is before you make that baby. Amen. Amen. Now, that might not be popular, but uh, that's where I stand, and I'm not going to back off from it. I mean, listen, without natural affection. And she'll plead for fairness in judgment. Listen, human judgment will sometimes go beyond proper bounds, but we, even in it all and through it all, we need God's intervention. I mean, she said, listen, Joab, don't destroy the entire city just because of one man. Uh, we'll work on this thing. Get, give us an opportunity here to handle this. She was intervening in that situation. And then last of all, a wise mother will magnify right over wrong. 
Verse 20 says, And Joab answered and said, Far be it, far be it for me that I should swallow up or destroy. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri, she begins to go into the whole process of saying, Listen, I mean, uh, th- here's, here's the deal. Sheba is, is the problem. You, you let us take care of the situation and we'll get rid of this guy. And so, uh, you know, she, she really was saying, you let me work on this. We'll magnify right over wrong. She's not going to sacrifice the innocent for the wicked, even when it's, even when right is not popular with others. I'm sure that when she went in and started talking to some of the people in the city and said, look at here, Sheba, we got to deal with this. We either deal with Sheba or everybody in this city is going to lose everything. Many of us will die if we protect this man. You know, I'm sure there were some were saying, well, we can't let that outsider come in and tell us what to do. Well, but the bottom line was she had to stand for right even when it wasn't popular. She'll do right even when it's hard. Do right even when it's hard. You know, sometimes it is. Abigail was a woman that had to basically go out and and deal with David because her husband at the time was such a wicked and evil man that she had to save the life of all of her servants and all of her household. She had to do what was necessary, and it's hard. You know, I got a reading last night uh, about Susanna Wesley. Susanna Wesley had, now catch this, 22 children. Wow. I mean, she had uh, 22 children. She had almost 200 months of pregnancy. Now, some of you ladies think about that. Okay? 200 months. 22 children. And yet... According to what the history books tell us, Susanna Wesley would specifically uh, take time so that she could spend time alone with each child as they were growing up to try to impress upon them the importance of their faith and their walk with God. Is it any surprise that John and Charles Wesley came out of that family and became people that literally turned England and America upside down for God. Wow. You know, she'll do right even when it's hard. She'll, she'll, she'll do right over wrong. She'll also stress best over good. Best over good. She'll, she'll stress wisdom over emotions. You know, do right. No matter how you feel about it, you know how many times somebody said, well, I'm just going to do this because I'm going to follow my heart. Your heart's liable to get you in trouble. You better use wisdom. Make sure you do right. Wisdom over emotions. And then she'll inspire to go the way over a good way. By the way, that, that phrase, the way, talks about following Jesus. In the early church, they hadn't figured out to call each other Christians yet. You know what they called it in the early church? They said, we're following the way. I like that. Didn't Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. They were following the way. And then she will inspire others to boldly do what's right. This past week, I think it was, I posted something early in the week on Facebook and had a few people respond on tributes to their mothers. Let me share these with you in closing. First of all, it says this, My sister and I are blessed to have such a wonderful, godly example for a mother. We're thankful for everything she does for us and are so glad we get to spend time daily with her. We watch her as she leads our family. She's always there when anyone needs her. She's like no other. Happy Mother's Day, Hector Fountain. You are so loved by us all. Then I got this one. I was so blessed to be raised by a Christian mom, Carolyn Collins. She was a wonderful homemaker who worked hard to take care of her family. She was truly an example of a godly woman. I remember her being involved in the ministry of Rince Baptist Church over the years. I'm thankful for the influence she had on my life and others around her. And then this one, my mother is truly the heart of our family. 
respected, admired, loved, and adored by all. Her unconditional love for each of us and her strong, unwavering faith in her love and Lord and Savior are such an inspiring example for me as a mother. I love this special lady that God has blessed me with that I call mom with all my heart. And that was written by my wife, Sandy. And then this one. I was closer to my mama than anyone my whole life. She knew me better than anyone. This woman could somehow take four kids to four ball fields at the same time. A lot. I don't know how she did that. Okay. She cooked every night. To me, she was the Proverbs 31 woman. She could do it all. This woman taught us about God through her actions. She truly loved unconditionally. She had so much selfless love. She made everybody feel so loved and special. Mark had that same gift from God. They had a way about them that no matter how bad they felt, they never complained. Rather, they always tried to cheer others up. If there was anyone beside Jesus that I wish to be like, it is my mama. She was the peacemaker and the glue that held us all together. She was my hero, and I still miss her so much. I am thankful she was saved and look forward to seeing her in heaven one day. And, of course, that was written by Cindy Savant. You know, God in His grace has placed a number of examples in our life that are worthy of our attention. And, of course, the most important example of all is an example of genuine faith. As I read those testimonials, I noticed one thing in common. They all spoke of their mama's faith in Jesus. That spoke to me. That impressed me. You know, we need a whole lot more mamas like Susanna Wesley and a whole lot less mamas like Athaliah. Be a Susanna Wesley kind of mama. Ladies, you have more power and influence than you realize. Make sure that influence is being used for the glory of God. If you're here today, maybe you've got a mama that knows Christ as Savior. Maybe you've got a mama that's already gone on to heaven. If you want to spend eternity with that mama that loved you so much, you need the same Savior that she knew. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, today's a good day to turn your heart and life to Jesus. Trust Him in His finished work on the cross of Christ, on the cross of Calvary. And you can know for sure that you also are on the way. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank You so much, Lord, for this day. Thank You for loving us. Thank You for the truth of Your Word. And Lord, I pray that, Father, we would just commit our hearts and lives to You. And Lord, follow you in every way. Lord, bless this day. Now, bless this invitation. May the Spirit of God do work in our hearts. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.